thanks, Lisa. So the meeting went really well, and I think they're going to give us a grant. And I'm pregnant. <laughs> and it's yours. <laughs> Ted! What? Oh, I'm um, sorry. I guess I was distracted. No, Dustin Hoffman and Rain Man was distracted. <laughs> Where were you? April 1st is coming up. April Fool's Day? I hate it. You know, the only reason we celebrate it is to keep the plastic vomit industry from going belly up. <laughs> Leanne and I got married April 1st, remember? Oh, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I sometimes laugh when something strikes me funny. This is the first anniversary we'll be together since the divorce. Treat it like any other day of the year. Just fight and bicker. Hmm? Mm. Ah, thanks, Lisa. I've got this one. Nine bucks. Ooh, boy. Um... <clears throat> PJ! How would you like to become a major financial supporter of public radio? Right. We'd mention your name on the air, your uh, firm commitment to public radio. The all-you-can-eat chowder bar for ladies on Wednesdays? Right. <laughs> I get all that just for tearing up a nine-buck tab? Well, we were thinking more like a uh, $200 a month line of credit. No way. <laughs> okay, how about for the nine bucks, then? Nah. <laughs> I gotta run. Bye-bye. Harrison! Oh, Naomi. Ah, Ted. Oh, here. Ironic. Even odd. <laughs> I'm surprised to see you here on a night when Lisa's tending bar. Why? Just because Lisa once had feelings for me that I did not reciprocate? Good evening, Mr. Green. Lisa, my usual, a dry martini. I'm way ahead of you. The perfect martini conjures up the image of the dry, hot winds of the Sahara. This, however, is more like the wet fog of Marseille. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Sorry. I would love to stay and watch you be unpleasant, but I've got to go. Oh, miss, there seems to be a problem with the phone. We've been getting complaints about that. Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Sinatra. Latoya Jackson. <laughs> Pretty rough night last night with Lisa. Lisa? Oh, Lisa? I saw you two in PJs, kissing in the phone booth. All right, I... I reached out and touched someone. <laughs> Let's just make that our little secret. Why a secret? As Alfred Lord Tennyson said, never mourn war to evening, but some heart did break. Oh, I'm happy now in my fool's paradise, but oh, I know that one day Lisa will reach down through my throat, rip my heart out by its roots, and stomp it into so much organ pate. <laughs> I'd like that particular humiliation to remain private. Don't you think you're overstating? Oh, I don't want to be a geek. I don't want people to point at me and stare. I don't want to be the dog-faced boy. <laughs> Why are you so sure this is going to happen? After our initial flirtation ended, I went to review a play. Lisa portrayed the younger sister, Happy, in the Feminist Theatre Alliance production of Death of a Salesperson. <laughs> Sorry I missed that. In my review, I said she was a revelation. Needless to say, we've been dating ever since. Still don't see where the dog faced. I was lying. Now she thinks I like her work. I'm her comfort, her support, her cuddly wuddly poo bear. <laughs> Forget I said that. But I still don't see. Oh, she'll leave me if she ever finds out the truth. Which is just around the corner. She's in rehearsals for an abysmal new play. She couldn't be more wrong for the part. 
Why can't she be as good on the stage as she is in the... Well... The phone booth? Thank you. Well, what about acting lessons? Lessons from whom? It would take a Stanislavski or a Strasberg from me. You? Me, Ted. I think you've hit on something. <laughs> I could be her coach. Oh, I'm lucky to have a friend like you. <laughs> Dad, can you help me? Help you? In an instant, he can solve the most tortured dilemma. Take the intuitiveness of Sherlock Holmes, the insight of Sigmund Freud, and the compassion of Mother Teresa. Put them all together, they spell T-E-D. What seems to be the problem, Gretchen? The toilet's overflowing. <laughs> If we stop production of a stupid stealth bomber right this minute, uh, the government could provide every man, woman, and child in the United States with health insurance. Harrison. Ah, another welfare giveaway. I like it. Uh, you have been listening to Toe to Toe. I'm Leanne Plunkett. <laughs> and he's Harrison Green. Harrison, you are supposed to argue with her. That was about the most boring show I've ever heard. Thank you. I thought so, too. <laughs> Why is Harrison being so damn pleasant? Oh, this is all my fault. Last week, he yelled at me, and I said, Harrison, you know you can attract more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Why did I have to mouth off like that? <laughs> Jay, you don't really think he pays attention when you say stupid things like that, do you? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm frazzled. This damn anniversary. Mine and Ted's. April 1st. April Fool? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not funny. Well, actually, it was kind of an April Fool's wedding. Justice of the Peace was half plot. They kept mixing up Ted with some guy named Big Al who came in for a fishing license. And they were halfway home before they discovered they were licensed to catch perch in the state of Maryland. <laughs> I almost didn't have a bouquet, but we had stopped at a convenience store for a prenuptial Slurpee. <laughs> and a guy had one beautiful red rose, so I carried that. And every anniversary, Ted would surprise her with one perfect red rose. Oh, I get chills when I hear stories like this. I always turned up in the damnedest places, in my shoe, in a sock drawer. In a bouquet. <laughs> Think about it. She'd never know which one. <laughs> Gretchen, I'm gonna have to put my foot down. No more brain home stray animals. This is a fish. Well, who ever heard of a stray fish? I found him in a baggie. What was I supposed to do? Just leave a goldfish to die in the parking lot? Jay, I love animals. I do, too. I just don't want them in the apartment. They're messy. Fish aren't messy. They are if you knock them over and you got water, sand, and a broken castle all over the rug. Ah, <laughs> oh, Ted, perhaps you're wondering how things are going with... Lisa. Well, glad you asked. She's a fine pupil and things are progressing beautifully. Thank you for your interest. Harrison, I'm so glad I found you. Oh, and I you, my love. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lisa. I love her. Oh. Harrison, I've only got a couple minutes to explain before this man arrives. Oh, oh no. No. Harrison no. Green. <coughs> Harrison Green? You stay away from Lisa. I won't let you tear it down what she and I have built. Drew. No, choose. Him or me. Do I have to? You want me to find someone else? No, no, no. Don't do that, please. Then dump this guy. Now. Drew. What did I tell you? Step right up, right this way to the dog-faced boy. <laughs> As we understand, We've all had women dump us. Well, maybe with not so large an audience. <laughs> but don't worry, there'll be other women. Maybe not as pretty as Lisa. Maybe not as pretty as you. But uh, they all be women. Harrison, I'm sorry about that. It's not as if I hadn't expected it. I shouldn't have told him about us, but we were having an argument and it slipped out. It's just that he's such a bad director. He's her director. Ah. You mean all the while we were seeing each other, you were having an affair with your director? I couldn't love someone whose talent I didn't respect. You see, she doesn't respect him. Of course she doesn't. Any fool can see that. I'm a fool with the inside of Sigmund Freud. <laughs> He's my director, but until I started working with you, I was terrible. Oh, well, I wouldn't say... Terrible? Well, fair enough. 
<laughs> Perhaps I should go and try and reason with this Drew fellow. Reason with him? Yesterday he broke the stage manager's nose. She's the sweetest woman. No, I've made my decision. I'm going to continue working with you, my dear. And if Drew asks you anything about it, you look him squarely in the eye. And make something up. <laughs> Hey, what do you, what do you? Nobody owns me, Tony, nobody. We've got the feeling right, my dear. Now let's work a little bit on the dialect, to wit. <laughs> hey, what are you, what are you? Nobody owns me, Tony, nobody. <laughs> hey, what are you, what are you? <laughs> Again. Hey, what are you, what are you? You don't own me, Tony. Nobody owns me. Much as I love you, I ain't gonna let you own me. I don't wanna own you, Antoinette. <laughs> Just let me love you, will you? Okay, Tony. Love me. Love me forever. <laughs> Rehearsal. I love you. Hi, George. I think she's got it. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Did they call you from school yet? Call? Why would they call? They haven't. Good. Because I want you to hear my side first. Your side? Christy and I kind of stole a car. <laughs> what? Christy left her science report at home, and she needed to get it fast. So during lunch, we noticed the driver's ed car just sitting there. You took the driver's ed car? But that's not why Miss Gersky's mad. Why is she mad? When I got to Christie's house, I kind of had to, well, park. <laughs> Janet, are the ants for you, Miss Gersky? Hello, Miss Gersky. Yes, she told us. Can I say one more thing? Yes, what is it, Mona? Christy, they fell for it. <laughs> now look at your parents. Bye, guys. <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> I've completely forgotten about it. Yeah, me too. I'm not expecting a rose or anything, but it'd be nice if you just acknowledge it. I wouldn't hold my breath. eating the garbage from the cafeteria. Oh, really? How did he carry a tray? <laughs> if you can leave this poor puppy outside on the cold street, that's your right, but I'm going to stay with him. Okay. Okay. You can stay one night. Oh, Lord, look at him drool. <laughs> You're all invited to be my guests at the theater this evening. Lisa's opening night. Gritton, Gritton, I saw that dog scratching. Now, if he's going to stay in the apartment tonight, he's going to have to be bathed and de -fleed. But I don't have time. Great. Come on. I'll just hold the drool till we get outside. <laughs> That's the first April Fool's joke I've ever tried. It worked! <laughs> I borrowed the dog from some friends of mine. I said I could get him groomed for free. We have now had two April Fool's jokes. Could that be the last, please? That was Anna Klenenot's music by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And now, for a complete shock to the nervous system, stay tuned for Capital Punishment with Don Tupsuni next on WGEO FM. Lose something, Donald? Yes! I was going to finish my first bit with this great blues tape, Blind Eddie Turtle Low. This it? Yes! <laughs> And now, Blues Men of the White House. <laughs> <laughs> 
starring Republican National Chairman Lee Scatman Atwater. We join Scatman and the President in the men's room of the White House. <laughs> don't think that people might see this blues thing as a cynical attempt to attract black voters, do you? Like it is, Prez. Later. <laughs> Live from the Apollo Theater in Harlem, it's Scatman Atwater and the Conservatoes. <laughs> supposed to be a professional radio operation. Wasn't it bad enough last year when somebody crazy glued Harrison to the toilet? <laughs> I'll never do it again, Naomi. Clinton, have you seen this? Not now. I gotta take this whoopee cushion out of her chair. <laughs> nah. Oh, Ted. Look at this. Draw. What? Thought I was gonna squirt. Diamonds don't squirt. It's an engagement ring. I'm going to give it to Lisa tonight after her opening. Boy, you really are jumping in this with both feet, aren't you, huh? <sighs> feet, ankles, knees, hips, heart, pulmonary system. Boy, you, you see where I'm going with this. <laughs> Gretchen. Oh, Lord, forgive me. What, what, what is it? I was taking the dog to get him washed, and he got away from me and ran into traffic, and this big beer truck. Oh, my God, no. Oh, Gretchen, no. Now, now, don't do this to yourself. He was just a stray. No, he wasn't. I borrowed him to play an April Fool's joke on you. This is horrible. Oh, Gretchen, oh. Gretchen. I know someday you're going to look back on this and laugh. Laugh? Yes. I know I am. April Fool's. <laughs> Hello, security. Get the Humane Society. Somebody left a bulldog outside WGEO, and it strangled itself on its leash. <gasps> I don't know, maybe you've got some sort of big doggy bag. <laughs> Jay, Gretchen? April Fool. <laughs> and now, can we get back to work? PJ. <laughs> 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 Boy, Harrison, you were right. Lisa was terrific. Well, she must have been thrilled, the ovation. A thrill not to compare with what's in store for her tonight. <laughs> what the hell was that all about? Harrison is going to propose to Lisa tonight. Oh, come on. I know it's April Fool's Day, but that's downright cruel. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to the ladies' room. Will you order me a... Cuba Libra for the lady. I'll have a draft. And a cognac for me. So... You're just not going to say anything at all to Leanne. It's a quarter to 12. In 15 minutes, it'll be somebody else's non-anniversary. Ah! Oh. Bear. Oh. I never could have done it without you. Oh, of course you could have. Just not very well. <laughs> now, if I could have a moment, please. Wait, wait. Something so exciting happened. I just have to tell you. The spotlight is yours. There was a New York producer in the audience, and he loved me. Speaking of loving... Wait, wait, you haven't heard the best part. He's producing a play off-Broadway, and he just fired the leading lady because her New York accent was for the boys. <laughs> so he offered me the part. I start next week. Oh, that's great. Oh, this is the break I've been waiting for. You can't be a serious actress unless you live in New York. Excuse us. But what about us? What about me? You can come with me. I have my radio show, my classes. I'm a tenured professor. I, I can't just give that up. I wouldn't ask you to give up the theater. I know. That's why I love you. So this is goodbye. I never want to hear you say that word. Well, I gotta go. 
They're sending a script over to my apartment. I have to learn my lines. How oh, poopy. None of this could ever happen without you. For you. Garrison, what can I say? The man once said, it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And if I ever meet that man, I'm going to kick him right in the crotch. <laughs> hey, I've been there. It hurts. <laughs> well, at least I didn't give her the ring. I still have my dignity. I didn't think you were going to do it. Neither did I. <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> Next, the first scientific live research comedy specials. My Magazine presents How to Be Famous. And Thursday night, it's an all-new Cosby show, followed by all-new episodes of A Different World and Cheers. Then, look up in the air. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a brand-new comedy from the producers of Cheers. It's Wings, Thursday.